Now, one thing that I uh, found really interesting and that I really respect you for is the fact that you came here many times before you even began writing the piece to do re research. And you spent a lot of hours at the Civil Rights Museum and, and other places here around the city to just get information. And I thought that was, you know, that is definitely the way you should go about composing a piece about Birmingham and about the movement uh, is to get as much information as you possibly can. My perspective was having lived it and, and you coming in uh, to the city to learn more about it. How did that affect, um, you know, your writing, not having actually lived here, but just gathering that information? How did it help and how did it uh, inspire your, your work? Yeah, well, I couldn't have written it without without being here and mm -hmm. experiencing all of that. I, I think uh, from start to end, it's a, it was a two-year process. Mm -hmm. And of those two years, one and a half years w was not writing a single note down, but reading everything I could, talking to as many people as I could, mm -hmm. um, learning as much as I could about the history, mm -hmm. and, and really asking folks, black or white, people who were heroes in the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. people who were passive in the civil rights movement, mm -hmm. citizens of Birmingham, mm -hmm. what would you want in a piece like this? Mm. What, wouldn't you, what wouldn't you want? What has been said too much about Birmingham? What has not been said enough? Mm -hmm. and, and so in a sense, unlike any other piece I've ever written, it's almost like a work of public art in that wow. it, it, it is written for this community mm -hmm. and it fulfills some desires that I think I understood from the majority of folks who I spoke with. Uh -huh. And those desires are, we want a hopeful peace. Right, right. We have had enough seeing dogs and water hoses and guns. Um, this is a city that's been maligned for so many years right. and people are not seeing the reality. Right. Which is that, th that so much goodness has come out of here in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. So my piece, while not sugarcoating anything, mm -hmm. And, and I believe it is a realistic piece, mm -hmm. it is one filled with hope because I feel that hope here. Right. That's, that's so important because, you know, in writing my piece also, I thought, well, there's no way that you can really sugarcoat it or bypass the tragic events that happen. I mean, you have to make some kind of commentary on that, I think. You have to speak about it in some way. But I didn't want that to be the focus of my piece. I wanted, like you said, to focus on hope and healing more than anything, you know, the continued healing of the community. And I think the people in Birmingham are doing that. That's what I love about Birmingham is the fact that we have gone through a lot that has divided and separated us, but we have learned how to, to heal and come together, I think. Now, there are a lot of people who I think focus so much on, um, well, we need to do more, we need to do more. Well, of course we need to do more. We'll always need to do more. but. I wanted to take some time with what I've written and what I put together to focus just on celebrating what we have done, you know, for change yeah. and, and what we can possibly do and will do in the future, I think, to even heal more. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I, I feel like your album is very much about celebrating hope mm -hmm. than dealing with one event that happened in September right. 15th, 19th, Absolutely. 63. Yeah. And I feel like I, 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 I'm coming to that from the same place that mm -hmm. I didn't want my piece to be about a bombing that happened right. in 1963. Exactly. Because first of all, that it, it lets too many people off the hook mm -hmm. by saying that this was one isolated event that mm -hmm. we're commemorating. Right. We're not commemorating that. No. We are, we are talking about everything that's happened since then. And that, you know, we, know, we all know that Birmingham was called Bombingham. That's right. it's, it's not that this, was, this came out of nowhere. There was a real climate of fear and, and hate in this, in this city. Mm -hmm. And uh, I decided that I, I simply don't want to write a piece about fear and hate where you have a bass drum or cymbals exploding to represent a bomb, right. it, it, it's just not that easy and it's mm -hmm. not that literal and we can't, we, we can't, we, nobody wants to hear that kind no. of music, you no. know, You're we right. want to write music that helps us heal and, yes. and helps us meditate 
on how to be good people. Right. And and I and I think that you have found the the right way to get there. I hope I have too. Because my piece uses so much text, mm -hmm. which is all called from the oral history project at the at the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute. Right. Um, uh, it's harder for someone sitting in the audience to just say, well, this is a piece about bunny rabbits, or, yeah, right. right? It's a piece about something. Right. And, and so what I did was try to find text that has a more universal um, approach mm -hmm. to what we're trying to celebrate or mm -hmm. commemorate. Right. And what I felt like the big message, the reason I call the piece a more convenient season, mm -hmm. is because for me, my my story into Birmingham was about taking action in the face of injustice. Mm -hmm. And and Martin Luther King's letter from a Birmingham jail is all about these two kinds of peace, a passive peace or a ne uh, an active peace, right. a negative and a positive peace, mm -hmm. one where you just let things happen. You might not be a, a bad guy, mm -hmm. but you just let things roll over you. Or if you do something about it, and it can be small, small acts of courage, but you got to do something, something. right? Mm -hmm. And and so that's what my piece is about, rather than about one isolated bombing in 1963. I think that's beautiful. Yeah. And 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 so you you really don't hear a lot about the bombing at all in mm -hmm. my work, just like in your album, there's mm -hmm. no real explicit mention, right? Absolutely not. You know, my address when I was a kid was 1328 16th Street North. Mm -hmm. So we live eight blocks away from the church. Mm -hmm. And um, so it was, it was a part of my life growing up, you know, was that church and that park, Kelly Ingram Park. Um, you know, we used to walk through that park all the time when I was a kid. So my experience um, was, was a very personal one because I think Although I was a kid, I didn't actually live through the events. I was here, and I was a part of the energy of the city when all that stuff was going on. And I remember, you know, some things about it. And I, I was talking earlier about uh, being able to see the progress, you know, from that point till now. And it's just a tremendous amount of progress. Yeah. And I wrote my piece, uh, I wrote the album uh, based on that progress what we've done from that point, the tragic events of that point, to where we are now. And we've just come such a, a great distance, I think. And I'm, I'm so proud of that, yeah. you know, as a citizen of Birmingham, I'm just proud of the fact that we've been able to do that and been able to heal, you know, from, from that time to now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I feel like Birmingham is sort of a beacon of light to other cities in the country and, mm -hmm. and in the world mm -hmm. for a city that has really, um, come from a place of absolute darkness to one that gives inspiration to, to other places. Right. And um, uh, several times when I've been down in Birmingham, people have said to me, what is your piece going to solve? Uh -huh. And I say, well, it's a work of art. It's not really going to solve, solve anything, anything, but it might open up a conversation. Sure, sure. And um, now, does your, does your album have text? Is text a part of your work? There is some text. Um, I actually covered a Bob Dylan tune, um, Blowing in the Wind, mm -hmm. and I also covered uh, This Little Light of Mine, which was a very prominent sure. song during the movement. And I actually wrote a little extended piece at the end where I've got a little girl singing, um, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. It's a repetitive thing. And um, the whole reason behind my writing that that portion of it is to uh, just kind of acknowledge the fact that we should be proud of the progress that we've made, let our light shine, you know, to the world, you know, mm -hmm. about the progress that we've made and, and what it took to get there. Um, there's also in that, that one song a small portion of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, a very small portion, I think it's just one sent one or two sentences, but um, I have that text that's in the, the piece and, you know, very little else. Most of it is, is, um, is the guitar speaking. Right. So in, in the stuff that I've written, I've tried to, to have these musical cues that I think will hopefully invoke certain types of emotion. Right. You know, like yours has the text. In the absence of the text, I try to 
use the music and the dynamics of the music yeah. to, you know, move emotions in a certain way. And um, so, you know, that goes on a lot through the piece. And it has more of a somber, traditional jazz feel to it as opposed to most of the other stuff that I've done. But hopefully it'll resonate, you know, hopefully mm -hmm. people will get the message. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think what's interesting about our, our works is that, that in a way we're dealing with abstraction mm -hmm. in, in very different ways. Yes. Because you're dealing with ab abstraction because there's very little text compared to my piece. Right. Know? And right. yet we're both dealing with with real subject matter, real events and history and, right. and the future, but you're doing it in a much more abstract way than, mm -hmm. than I am because the guitar is speaking. Right. And the guitar means that each person who listens to your piece can interpret it in, in a, a deeply way. personal right. way. Right? Exactly. It exactly. can mean anything. Mm -hmm. I'm using text so that the, the, the level of interpretation is much more narrow. Mm -hmm. There's fewer possibilities for how do you, as a listener, interpret, interpret what I'm trying to say. Exactly. And that's interesting because on that level, you're far more abstract than I am. Mm -hmm. And then on another level, our, our musical languages are very different. Mm -hmm. you're, you're coming from a, a vernacular place. Right. I'm coming from, I mean, it's impossible to ignore mm -hmm. all the music that came before me, right. but I'm writing a very different kind of language than you are. I, I hope that people get the full meaning of your piece, you know, the, the way that you've, you know, constructed it and the things that you're trying to say with it, I hope that people get, you know what I mean? Because it's so important that they understand exactly what's going on in the piece, you know, the way you've laid it out and the way you've expressed how you feel about Birmingham and, and what happened. I think it's, it's important that they know. I, I hope so too, yeah. and that's why I've left some things um, the, not all the answers are being given, mm -hmm. and so there are there are texts that are being sung mm -hmm. that if you don't know the history of what happened here, they won't they won't mean a lot mm -hmm. to you. And I felt that rather than trying to explain within the piece, mm -hmm. rather than giving a history lesson mm -hmm. in the piece, I thought, what if I have these mysterious texts mm -hmm. that if you don't know what it means, that should force you to go out and learn. And learn. And so it's, by, it's a way of teaching by absence. I don't know, it's an experiment. I don't know if it works, but you know, the text the, the, in, this, in the second movement of my piece is all about questions that were asked of African Americans who attempted to vote. Mm -hmm. These crazy questions mm -hmm. like how high is height? Right. How far is distance? Mm -hmm. How many seeds are there in a watermelon? things like that, mm -hmm. these demeaning, humiliating questions, mm -hmm. but they're also rather, if you take them out of context, they're kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. How high is height? Mm. How far is distance? Right. They're beautiful. Yeah. But if you had no idea where those questions come from, mm -hmm. and you just hear a chorus singing those questions, mm -hmm. you should be asking yourself, what do these words have to do with this piece? Mm -hmm. Why are they being sung? Well. And in the Jewish tradition, you know, in Passover, you always have the youngest person in the room ask questions mm -hmm. about who are we? What are we doing here? Mm -hmm. How did we get here as a people? And so that's, that, that I think has made its way into my piece. That's wonderful. I th you know, and what I think is that young people in particular should, should hear this piece. And like you said, ask those questions. You know, what does this mean? Where does this come from? And, and maybe it'll be a lesson for them as well.